In the previous video, I talked about linguistic time, diachronic time, and synchronic time, or diachrony or synchrony, or time through history or present time. So in the context of variation, you can also talk about change. You might think, okay, what is the difference between variation and change has to do with the concept of time. So if you want to talk about variation and change, we need to think of linguistic time in the sense that depending on what kind of time lens you adopt, you will come across different kind of differences in linguistic form. But again, depending on the time lens, the differences will be named differently. So, for example, if you look up the etymology of a word, the word brother, so the, the modern English word brother comes from the old English word brother, and it comes from Germanic, and then ultimately it comes from Indo-European brother. You see here, we are having a diachronic lens. We are time traveling back in time. So in each of these cases, after a certain period, one form of the word has replaced the other word. Here, you can say that a particular form has changed to another form. So this is diachronic differences, right? But then you have synchronic difference. For example, the word little can be pronounced little if you enunciate it little or little, depending on the dialect. So here again, you're encountering different forms of the same word, different phonological forms, but these forms exist at the same time side by side. So in the first kind of difference, we are talking about change. In the second kind, we are talking about variation. If you're looking at linguistic differences through the synchronic lens, you're dealing with variation. If you're looking at linguistic differences through the diachronic lens, you're looking at change. So obviously, if you are studying historical linguistics or any sub-branch of it, like historical phonology, you're studying change in that particular language. If you want to study variation, you will, be, you will have to do something like dialectology or variationist linguistics. Usually, when you talk about variation, you might hear the words variation and change together. And that is because there are two kinds of change. One is change in progress, because if you think that, oh, language has changed, then you can theoretically experience a period in time during which the language is going through change. So that would be change in progress. But sometimes you're dealing with completed change. So in historical linguistics, you're usually dealing with completed change. There is actually a conference, there is an institution, uh, N-WAVE. If you want to take part in this conference, your research paper has to be about variation. Or you can also talk about change. Because uh, what they do is they present academic papers on patterns of language variation or the study of language change in progress. So there is like that subtle sub-distinction between change in progress and completed change. You have variation and variation can give birth to change. You have two or more forms with which apparently you're referring to the same thing and then after a while one of these forms will dominate and all the other forms will go out of fashion. So before that moment happens, you're dealing with a scenario of variation. But once that substitution takes place and one form dominates the market and everything else stops being used, that's when change has taken place. So if you look at differences in linguistic form through historical time, diachronically, you'll be looking most likely at change. If you look at differences in linguistic form at any section of time, synchronically, you will be looking at variation. If you travel through history, you will see that as you travel through time from the linguistic ground zero from the beginning, to any later point in time, the same concept may have been referred to with different linguistic forms. So that is the case of the word brother. 
You can perceive similar differences if you look at any given language, say English, in any section of time, say the present. So you can find differences in linguistic form with, with which English speaking people refer to the same thing, right? So the latter is called variation and the former is change. So variation and change can take place at different levels, phonological, lexical. Example of phonological variation in English I already introduced, like the variation between ta, ra, ra, bottle, bottle, bottle. An example of lexical variation is elevator, American English, as opposed to lift, which is British English. In Canada, the word couch or sofa, like old people, call it Chesterfield. Morphological himself or himself. Syntactic, uh, do you have any tea or this is American English or have you any tea? This is British English. So when you have a situation of variation, every single form is called a variant. Change occurs when a variant replaces the other variants. Changes can accumulate through time and give birth to no forms of the same language. For example, the reason why you divide the history of English into Old, Middle and Modern English is because the language has changed enough to be called a different variety of English. So these are examples of the same sentence in number one is Old English, number two is Middle English, number three is Early Modern English, number four is Contemporary Modern English. These are all English, but you can see how much even English has changed. So you need to know that variation is an inherent property of language, according to Lebov. Basically, in language, we have form, function, asymmetry in language, which means we may have different forms for the same meaning or we may have different meanings for the same form. We usually do not have a one-to-one -one correspondence between form and meaning. This is what form, function, asymmetry means. And this is also what Lebov calls inherent variability. So this means that language is inherently variable, but you should also know that language also changes and the reason for change is variation. In Brazilian Portuguese for we, we have nós. They actually pronounce it something like nós, nós. We also have a gente. They use a gente instead of we. Now the question is when you use a gente for we, what kind of verb do you use? Do you use the verb for first person plural or do you use the verb for third person singular? Because a gente is technically third person singular in terms of form, but in terms of content is first person plural, right? So now in uh, in Brazilian Portuguese, both ways are common. Some people use first person plural verbs, some people use third person singular verbs. Maybe this is a case of change in progress in Portuguese, I don't know. So you could argue that the change is diachronic variation. If you say the section of time that I want to discuss is a thousand years, then a lot of the things that you may otherwise see as change suddenly become variation. If you say my the span of my study is 500 years, then in the same time section you're having all these different things. So you could argue that change is diachronic variation. Dialects are variation. So language genealogy is about change. 